Look at this guy. Yeah. Just broke our damn hearts. Uh huh. What up, baby? Ruined the lot house. Yeah, happy to see you. Completely man. ruined. Everybody's the, happy to see you. Ruined the lot house. Right, I picked him. Really I picked him to win. You, I'm all right. CJ. Hey, first off. Congratulations on winning the AFC South as a yeah. rookie quarterback. Yeah, first, it's a big deal. First time ever with a rookie. You okay? That's a big deal, CJ. Mm. You guys will be hosting a playoff game <laughs> in this stadium right here. Could have been in Indianapolis. Turns out that game became an AFC South championship game, and we watched you. Dude, you're absurd, bro. <laughs> Thank you. For how that. young you are, you – like, you seem like a 10-year vet when you're out there. Like, when we're watching you with your teammates, too, the way you interact with your team and your coaches between plays, after plays, the way you celebrate and talk to everybody. Why? Why? Why are you – why is it just so easy for you? And what do you think this team has that has made it such a special run this year? Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Uh, I really feel like I was kind of groomed into this, uh, going to Ohio State, winning a lot of big games, losing a lot of big games. Um, having to be the leader on the team. Every, when everything hits the fan, everybody's looking at you. And at that point, it was like 108,000 in our stadium. Um, but now it's a little less, but it, it's still a lot of pressure. Uh, but I, I, like I said before, I think pressure is a privilege. And I think God put a, a, a special spirit in my heart to be able to calm the storm and rally guys around. And uh, I also have a, a, a great uh, teammates to do it with me, you know? So um, it's been a blessing this year, working with a great group of guys. Um, and we, we shocked the world, and we just want to keep going. We want to keep proving ourselves right. Does it feel like a college locker room? Does it feel like, because, uh, you know, sometimes, like, I came into a very old locker room. Right, right. I was, like, one of the youngest guys, one of the only single guys in there. For you guys, it feels like everybody's kind of, we're building the same thing. Is that an accurate depiction of how it is, actually? Yeah, honestly? 100%. Like, we're all really close. Uh, we all hang out pretty much. Um, of course, the younger guys, like, Match and Tank are probably two of my best friends on the team. and. Um, we all have a group text where we text each other funny things and all type of stuff. So um, it's, it's been a really a tight new gri tight uh, knit group, and I think that's like the best teams I've been on has been the tightest teams, like the closest teams. Absolutely, because you're playing for each other. Exactly, Mike. and it's very obvious whenever you're watching, which was on Saturday night. Mm. Before the boys have their questions for you, CJ, and we appreciate you making time for us today. You made this one play. Mm -hmm. God, you're fading away. Okay. Throw away. Oh, it must have slipped out of his hand. Bummer. Not getting out of bounds. Colts pick. This is going to be awesome. Here we go. Pick six yeah. coming right yeah. towards us. Yep. Right back towards where <laughs> so we were. Right. But instead, it was a catch. And I think you did it on purpose. Foxy, can you pull this play up? The fadeaway throw to the right. Yeah, this one, right? This one. Look. Oh, Look, uh, 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 oh he's going to throw it away. Oh, he's too tired. He must have slipped. No. Uh, only okay. your guy there. Jeez. How the hell did you know he was there? And when it left your hand, did you know that that was going to be good? Because when you stood up, you acted so casual. And I was so mad about that. Like, I, I, I was, <laughs> there was so much that happened there. I was like, this guy's in the AFC South. He's a rookie. It's absurd. But that play in particular, what was, what was going through your mind? How did you know that that was going to happen? Yeah, well, um, they, they were in man-to-man -man coverage, um, and they rolled the safety down. So he took away my first option. I went to my second option, and uh, they were in man, so he did a good job of having sticky coverage. So at that point, I'm trying to find my check down, and check downs aren't always great in man-to-man -man coverage because they're, they're matching. Um, so I knew that it was time to scramble, so I tried to step up and scramble, and I think somebody got loose, so I, I spent left, yeah. spent left, um, tried to find a way out, and DeForest uh, Buckner, who's a, who's a heck of a player, a lot of, a lot of respect for that guy. He's like, he's a unit. He's like 6'10", 350. He's moving fast as heck. So I got up out of there, um, and I kind of seen Nico take off. And I was like, I don't have much, but I'm going to just try to give him a shot. And with that guy, man, you give him a shot, he's going to go make a play. Yeah, he made a lot of them against us the other night, as did you. <laughs> Darius has a question for you. Yeah, we saw you uh, last year in the college football playoff scene, obviously playing against Georgia. Tough, tough fought game. Uh, long, long season in the NFL. You know, at some point you hit that rookie wall. I know you missed a couple games late with the concussion, but how does the body and the mind feel going into this playoff? Hopefully another playoff run, a playoff run for you in the NFL. How does it feel right now? Man, it feels amazing. Uh, like you said, it, it was tough missing those two weeks on yep. uh, concussion protocol and things like that. Um, I really appreciate people reaching out to me, making sure I was fine. Um, and I think ultimately it was all uh, meant for the better of me, you know, um, and came back out against Tennessee. You had a good game here at home and then went on the road and got a hard fought win against a great coach team. So um, this year has been a lot of ups and downs. Um, uh, uh, it's been the longest year of my life yeah. uh, from going all the way from August of 2022 to what is it, uh, mid-January now. You know, it's, it's been a long year, man, but it's been a dream come true. I'm living out my dream as a child, 
Um, I used to always just dream about playing the NFL games, big time, night games, and that was my first one. So it was just really cool to kind of see the fruits of my labor uh, be able to, to come out um, in, a, in a big atmosphere against a great team. So it's been a great year, man. I've been blessed. In the middle of that run, you took a test, the S2 test, mm -hmm. and they say you were just dumb. Yeah. You remember that? Yes, sir. This guy's dumb. Yep. Can't dumb, do it. Can't I assume that test is never going to be used again because Probably. all you've done is just come in with a football IQ level that nobody historically has, by the way. You have, a, like, historic records for being the smartest <laughs> rookie quarterback <laughs> Take care to well. ever play. Oh, yeah, yeah by a lot, and then, and then there's – that thing said he wasn't – no. So I think it's just dead, right? Yeah. No. Good right? run. You think, you think these decision makers are going to make that decision and say, oh, it's bullshit. Let me move to something else. Well, they, I think they have to. Yeah, well, have now, to. The strategy yeah. now is, hey, hey take, take whoever is the dumbest quarterback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what you do now. That's well, I, think, I want pages. Like, I always say that the eye in the sky don't lie. So um, you watch the film, you put on the tape, even from college, like you can't play at Ohio State and under Coach Day, who's a, who's a world-renowned offensive coordinator, play caller. Uh, his his offense is pretty is, is, is pretty deep when it comes to being knowledgeable. You have to know everything. I even have more responsibilities in college than I do now in this offense, in this scheme. So um, yeah, but that means you're only going to get better, which sucks for us because yeah. <laughs> yeah. they haven't even yeah. uh, unleashed you completely, yeah, which is yeah. a whole different animal. CJ, it's been awesome to watch you. Speaking of Ohio State, AJ has a question for you. Yeah, well, have you thought about what it's going to be like having a playoff game in here? I saw you after the game in the Loud House, as Pat calls it, in Indianapolis. Well, wow, so. they're calling it the Stroud House now. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it is. Now, you ruined it. Was it loud? Nah, no, it was loud. Damn it. That was a great atmosphere. Uh, even pregame. Yes. There you go. Yeah, pregame. Were you rattled uh, at all? You, like, were you intimidated? False start, seven of them. Seven of them. We didn't have seven false starts. I think it was ten. I think it was ten false starts. maybe. One, two. No, 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 no. You did have a lot, yeah. We had a lot? Yeah, I was celebrating heavy because it was kind of like our game. We came back and got a lot of first downs after that. All right. Okay. We get more yards. That's all we got. Yeah. I'm excited to see see this place packed, man. It's going to be loud. It's going to be very loud. loud. I know you said that this is probably the loudest city we played in. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. I think even just to piggyback off what you said, Playing in, in Indianapolis, that was probably the loudest stadium I played yet in, mm. in, in NFL. Wow. Uh, that was like a college atmosphere. How about that? That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> That's yes. I love Six that. I like, I like being the villain. Like, run out to the booze. Yes. And yeah. you guys had the light show going on. A lot yeah, of they, cute stuff. They made you. What was that? A lot of cute stuff. <laughs> it was. <laughs> cute. you meant. Yeah, smart, sophisticated, cute, winning right? franchise. Right, yeah, right. you're talking. They did have you guys staying out there for a long time. During that light show, right, right. That was a long. That was a long time. Y'all do it on purpose. It's okay. Oh yeah, it's I mean, right. strategy. Of course, yeah, that's all part of it. Ty has a question Didn't for you. <clears throat> all right, hey, listen. <laughs> Congrats, <laughs> AFC South champ, yep. right? CJ Stroud right. as a rookie. Go ahead, Ty. CJ, you mentioned you know you guys shocking the world. Like after you got drafted, you know everyone was basically saying like, hey, this team, three four years, like they're gonna be unbelievable, but. No one, in, at least in the media, expected you guys to do what you've done this year. Did you use that as, like, a chip on your shoulder at all during the year? I mean, obviously you don't care about what the media is saying and all that kind of stuff, but, like, it's got to feel pretty good at this point, proving everyone wrong like right. that. And you guys are, I mean, you're unbelievable. And, and, you know, you don't have to wait three, four years. The time's now, obviously. Yes, sir, yeah. Um, I feel like any motivation is good motivation, you know. So um, I think it'll be a lie. People say they don't listen to the media. or like, Of course, like, we don't necessarily care. But everybody hears it. Like the day and age where we live in, social media, you have access to like everything, TV, your phone, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I personally try to log out to everything, but people text me stuff and things. So um, you, you hear about it and you're like, man, like, I wonder why they think like that. Let me go, let me go prove them wrong. Uh, but our mindset here, let's prove ourselves right. We knew what we had in this locker room and uh, we brought in a, a lot of vets that, that have been winning in other places and things like that. So um, we knew that we, we would have our opportunities to play in big time games, and we've a lot, we won, actually won a lot of tight knit games too. So those were the times where I leaned on my vets, and I was like, "Man, what do y'all think? Like, what do you think about this year? What can we do?" They're like, "Man, we have a Super Bowl team. Like, we have a team that that can shock shock everybody." Um, and and you're, you you so know do that, yeah. yeah you have no idea exactly because you don't really know what it takes because I, I I'm, it's my first year you know so that that whole you don't know what you don't know thing yeah I mean, it's, that's real good but, yeah, it certainly but is. I think. The, the statement of uh, winners win, winners win and losers lose, I think that's real. And in my career, I won a lot of games, and my teammates have as well. Um, I just think we needed winners in the in the building. So uh, once we got that going and started getting a rhythm for each other, it took a while, but, you know, uh, football is not an overnight thing. It takes a minute. So once we got our rhythm, we started looking good, and now we're here. Yeah, it took forever. Yes, it did. <laughs> yeah, it Four took weeks. Long, yeah. It took a real long time. And I think the good thing that you guys did, CJ, especially with how you played, and who you are as a human, and how you've handled this. You know, you wanted to be like Houston, like, hey, I love Houston. 
Like, there's even a video going around the internet, I don't know if it was after you drafted, but you like put over Houston versus like Indianapolis, which is a lot of people are like, he's talking, <laughs> he's talking right, shit right. on Indianapolis. It's like, no, Houston is, Houston's an awesome, awesome. Great city. Houston yeah. is an awesome place. I think you've handled it perfectly. And I think a playoff appearance, especially with the buzz, you're gonna wake up this crowd too. Like I, I, you know, we saw a lot of these chairs. We were yep. talking shit to JJ mm -hmm. early because I don't think I think they felt kind of betrayed by the Texans organization. How things have gone. Like you tell us to buy into something, then you fire that person. Then you yep. tell us to buy into something, then you fire that something. And then everything that happened, it's like I feel like the messages that I've gotten from Texans fans is that they like felt betrayed by the Texans for a couple years, and now with the moves that have been made, it feels like everybody's okay, we're back to being the Houston Texans again. You, that's an incredible honor, I think. And for a rookie to be the one kind of leading the way is stupid. Not, it doesn't work like that Appreciate a lot. That. You should take a lot of pride in, like, bringing a city. Peyton did that for the Colts. Yeah. He is a statue, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, like, Indianapolis was not a football town before Peyton got there because right. the team had been not great and decisions had been terrible. Then Peyton gets there and the whole state, the whole place is now a football town. Right. It's like you're going to do that again here. And I Thank hate that. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> tough and Randy. I absolutely hate that. Connor has a question for you, CJ. Yeah, CJ, Ty just mentioned you don't listen to what the media says, and I assume the team doesn't, but just so you know, you do know, right now the biggest threat to the Ravens is Joe Flacco and the Browns. So just so oh, you yeah, know. Oh, yeah, Stephen A said you guys have oh, no chance. Yeah. No chance. No, I'm not a Browns uh, fan, but I'm just telling you. Oh, we have no media. chance? Yeah, right. Stephen A said a rookie yeah. quarterback yeah. No way. is not going to do anything Super Bowl. in the playoffs. That's not happening. All right. And the Ravens don't want to see. They don't want to see Joe Flacco. They don't. Right. CJ Stroud comes to town. Who gives a shit? But if Joe Flacco comes to town, look out. So just so you know, that is what they're saying. But uh, Connor, reason. Connor just put a ten thousand dollar bet on the Houston <laughs> Texans. <laughs> damn right I did. But there was a moment after the game. It was unbelievable. Where D'Amico Ryan's is waiting in the hallway to the locker room and you know he's emotional but he waits for you and then when you lead in you two like jump together essentially into the locker room it was unbelievable how great is it to have a rookie head coach with you alongside you i mean you can probably lock him in for coach of the year now right. and what do you think about the people who say hey if you're going to hire a head coach, don't hire a defensive guy. You should hire an offensive guy because that's the one who's going to be running your offense forever, whereas D'Amico has been that like defensive, kind of almost an old-school yeah. Tom and Belichick type of coach. What do you think about those type of things being said and just how far you and D'Amico have come since you know training camp? Yeah, um, I said it before, but I think D'Amico is a perfect person for this job. He was the one, when I, when I met him, uh, he was like, this is the only job he wanted to be a head coach because he played for the Texans. He wanted to uplift the city of Houston. So I would say, man, like, if you're looking for a head coach, you, you want to look for somebody who cares, he cares about the city, cares about winning, cares about the, his players, man. has been in the position before that he's done that before, you know? So um, when, I, when I look at D'Amico, like, of course, like, yeah, we're, we're figuring out a lot of stuff together, but, man, like, the poise that he has, the trust that he puts in his players, the accountability that he holds us to, um, the standard that he sets, you know? Every day you see him put put – constant work in you know so um it's nothing to do but just follow that you know and to be a great leader you have to be a great follower as well so that's all i do with him man um i listen to him a lot he's a man of god he, he definitely um cares about his players he always asks us what we want instead of just putting things out there um, he puts a, a multitude of things on the table from just team issues or like even locker room stuff like uh, we need a new shower heads. He got us new shower heads, you know. So like hey. just little stuff. And Man, some head coaches that's good. Not that's care good baby that. face move. Yeah. No, really. Yeah. So up. like that may even like it's a small thing that makes your players want to play for you a little harder, you know. So uh, I love D'Amico, Man, he's a great coach. I think Nick has done a great job as well. Our ownership has. Just the city of Houston, like you said, man, like I don't know about what happened in the past, but I know now, like the, just the buzz in the city just feels great, you know. Um, just feels like it, it, how it's supposed to be. Oh yeah. What else we? Uh... We need a new pool table. We need uh... <laughs> Well, Case Keenum is probably the best, uh, what is it, the ping pong. Oh. Case is nice. Okay, Case what else do really we good. have? We got ping pong in there? We got ping pong. We got basketball. I'm by far the best shooter on the team. Ooh. I don't want to hear it. Ask George Fant. Ooh. Ask Laramie Tunsil. <laughs> Shaq so, Mason. So are those guys your fans or guys you beat? Guys I've beaten. Oh, okay. Uh, Not the guys yeah. that are like, CJ's the guy. Like, no, you can ask shit. anybody. These are guys that you just beat and they know. These. Yes. Okay. Tank Dale. What are we playing? Ten shots? So we, I don't want to, I don't want to put us on blast, but we just go like shot for shot, pretty much. Okay, got it. Shot for shot. So if I hit, he miss, and yeah. Yeah, you win. Game. Yeah. Is there cornhole in there? Uh, it's actually a new game. Uh, it's not spike ball. It's it has like, uh, John Weeks just put in there our, our long snapper. He's been here. He's on like his 15th year. Dude, you know he, Weeksy? Yeah. He's my guy. He's been playing there for, how many punters? 
a lot. Yeah, he's been here for what, 15, I think? Stud. I think he had a couple injuries too, yeah. middle of his career. He came so back. So he got a he's new a game dog. in there. Uh, it's like orange and strings, and it's a ball. And it's like a net, and then it's a, another net on top, and it's like a cone. And then it's another thing on top. And if you, so it's like two points if you get it on the first thing. How we do it? We're throwing? What are we so doing? So you're throwing it and you want to bounce it and then it like go. I don't know what it's called, but it's a cool game. They He's just good? put in there last week. I ain't played it yet. Steve Nelson is good at the, our, our corner. Well, we see you Steve. play uh, baseball. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Lacrosse. <laughs> Golf. Right. Basketball. Yep. Right. And football for your warm ups. Have you developed any routines throughout this NFL season? Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the main things I wanted to do was uh, get away. Because like in college, I was very superstitious. Like, I would like do a lot of like things just to like get myself in the rhythm, but isn't it crazy the pressure you put on yourself exactly. to make it? To right. make it is a lot different than the one once you have kind of. Yeah, yeah, and I, I I look back and I'm like, man, I just put a lot of like dumb pressure on myself to yes. like like to if I didn't do this little thing, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna play bad or whatever. Like I thought it was so stupid. So that Georgia game, I just started doing whatever felt natural, and then from there, uh, I went back home in California and started training with my my trainers. Uh, 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 John Beck, Taylor Kelly, and Adam Dudo, who works with 3DQB, where I train in Huntington Beach. And we started doing like basketball stuff, baseball stuff, swinging baseball bats. Um, just being an athlete. Yeah, just being like, like, cause being a quarterback, like, it's such a rotational sport. Like, it's so many different movements. Like, you're crossing, you're crossing over like a quarterback. You're shuffling like you're playing defense. You're rotating your body like you're swinging a bat. You're flicking your wrist like you're shooting a basketball. Yeah, we saw, yep. we saw that. We saw that. There one. was like a 21 yarder yeah. <laughs> where you're getting tackled, and you yep. literally just did that. You like that one? No. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't like yeah. any of it, but a it was incredibly stuff, impressive. A lot of that stuff kind of plays into like the role of a quarterback, and it just feels natural to me. I played all those sports growing up, and I know it kind of looks crazy, but I like it, and it works. So, so we saw you at that Georgia game. Yep. And uh, we said, yeah, that's the... Sunday guy. That's the guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's the one right there. You just I, said that I, was a different you, though, right? Yeah. Mentally um, or physically, you think? Um, I would say both. Uh, I, I came into that game, like, I, I would say every... I, I wouldn't say that was probably my best college game. I think that was um, my most free game. Where, like, I was like, man, whatever happens, I don't really care. I'm, I'm going to go out with no regret. So mentally, you feel yeah, good Yeah, I just let go, too. you know? Because yeah. yeah. it's a lot of pressure playing on Ohio State, man. Um, losing one game, especially like the games we lost, like, like we're still a really good team, but like our no. fan base, everybody told us like we sucked at that point, you know. So <laughs> yeah. it was like a, I was like, man, you know what? And a lot of our fans stuck stuck true. Uh, it's like the social media fans. That's what I call. It. Like you'll you'll go to and you'll see a stadium, and Coach Day used to tell me this like. You could think the whole stadium hates you. They really don't. Our, our fans love us, you know. But losing that game does, doesn't help. And it's like those those. 500 negative fans that are in the Which conference. is a lot of scrolls. Right. 500 is a lot of scrolls right. if you think about it. And in that. college, I used to go look, and, like, that was just the worst thing I could possibly do. But, like, at that point, I'm like, man, you know what? Like, I, I, I've done a lot of cool stuff in college, and I'm going to go just prove myself, you know? And we're going to prove ourselves right in this game. And we did that. Of course, we came up short, but that was a game I think, like, man, I think I, I showed, like, what I can do for real. That's a very mature way of looking at life, which is why you've probably had the success that you've already had in the NFL at such a young age, because that's not easy to get through. You know, because that 500 is a lot of, that's a long time. Right. That's like, what, four on a screen at a time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you start doing it. If you think about how many 500 is, and it's so much, yeah. but you got a hundred and some thousand yep. in the stadium that don't feel obligated to tell you, hey, I like you. Right. Yeah. It's a different time. It's interesting to have 100%. that mental toughness, I think is, uh, you know, great for you, terrible for the Colts. Mm. Yeah, brutal. <laughs> it is absolutely terrible for the Colts. CJ, we appreciate you stopping by, man. You're going to be at the game tonight? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about it. I don't know, man. Michigan, man, come on. Yeah, yeah. Michigan yeah. fans will love you. Yeah, like cheer for them. <laughs> it's respect. I don't know. I can't, I can't say anything else. I, I can't disrespect. <laughs> But I don't know. I'm going for Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Phoenix is a great quarterback, by the way, man. He's a dog. Uh, yeah. I like Phoenix. I like the receivers. Yeah, me too. What's his name? Yeah. He does. Phoenix? All right. Michael. Yeah. Phoenix? What I've is been, it? I've been pronouncing it wrong all yeah. season. Yeah. You what might be, you're smart. My hey, bad, Mike. My bad. No, it's all right. He's, he, hey. he's a dog. Mm. Tight spiral. Mm -hmm. We actually, bro, so we played him in COVID year, 2020. And he lit us up. Indiana? Indiana. Those are fun, man. He yeah. lit us up. And I was like, the game, he kind of got put on the map. I was like, man, who is this dude? He was nice. Yeah, stone for four player. bills four times this year already over 400. Wow. They, obviously, JJ McCarthy, 26 and one as a starter. So he's he, a dog. Is he lean for you? We'll see, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no comment. Rose Bowl was awesome watching that Michigan team come together. Yeah. Everything they've been through, and then the Washington team, same exact stuff. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been down them all year. Every game, that's like, ah, wow, man. point underdogs. And then they just go on and win everything. Well, it was a bowler that said a cool quote once. 
uh, he was basically, it was, he was retiring. He was thanking everybody. He was like, thank you guys for watching. That's all you could do. So, like, that's how, like, I feel like as players, <laughs> that's how we feel. It's like, y'all can talk all y'all want. We really the ones. We the man, men in the arena. You know, we the yeah. ones going out there, putting our bodies, putting our lives, putting our, our livelihood on the line, you know. So, like, people can say whatever they want. It doesn't matter. Like, a lot of people appreciate go the hell out of you, though, you know? yeah. so. especially in this city. Can't wait to watch you, man. We yes, appreciate, you. appreciate you. Ladies appreciate and gentlemen, C.J. Stroud. Yeah. Yeah. We've got about a minute and a half left here on ESPN. We'll continue after the second hour on YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. I guess there's some people that watch on there Whoa. Yep. that are like work or are you sure? yep. school. CJ, you Why? got a QR code on your pants. Did you know that? Where does that go? Where does that take us? Oh, Steve Sam. oh no, you're muted. Oh, you're my muted. bad. It's Steve Sam's, his, uh, his brand. So like one it. of our players here. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you. It looks super it, cool. You get the. You get the uh, the link to where it goes. Thanks for the website. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we see it? Yeah. Can we see the link? Him, it's like a cross. Because we might be able to get the QR code. Yeah. Yeah, then people can see Mid- it. definitely Sims. cop those. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh we yeah. got to get. Can you see? Oh, oh no, I got to pull oh, it up a little bit. Oh. Boom. There it is. Boom. Good fine. Get camera three. Good eye. Good eye. Bye. Good eye. All right, I'm going to get out of here. All right. All right. See you, CJ. Good luck. Michigan is going to clip him saying, I like Phoenix, by the way. I just want that to be known. Pe- Penix. 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 I, yeah. I mean, everyone says it different, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, didn't uh... – Desmond Howard. Yeah. 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 Desmond Howard said oh, Penix. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, see you, dude. Thanks for being so good at football. You guys are so screwed. Yeah. So Unfortunately, long. you wow, are. Man. thought it was Trevor Lawrence. Too. Wearing his teammates' clothes, too. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> says <laughs> all the right things. Yeah. yeah. Does everything right. Yeah.